Hi guys, and welcome back to another Wednesday Wonder. This is episode nine. I didn't do one last week. Uh, I was a little bit too busy over Christmas, but hey, I'm back again now, 2021, another Wednesday Wonder. Let's get on with it. So a lot of you guys have been following me know that recently I've been shooting quite a bit of ortho film, trying to get a bit used to it, and I've enjoyed developing it in Rodnoll. Uh, why? Because I've seen some nice results with Rodnoll, mainly at one part to 25. Um, but I've liked Rodnoll for many years. I don't really use it as much on landscapes and seascapes. Uh, I find it just a little bit too much in the grain. But I certainly love using it for street photography uh, and cars and anything rugged buildings or anything that I would want to make a little bit gritty. You know, Rodnoll is ideal for that and it's very economical as well. Recently, I've been dabbling with Rodnoll in ortho and I've had some nice results, even with a few seascapes at one part to 25. But I want to know exactly what happens if I do different developments with the rod null uh, and the ortho film and also some different inversions as well. So that's what I'm going to be dabbling with on this Wednesday wonder. Behind me I've got a little setup, there's my measuring jug there, I've got a little tiny bit of rod null in a shot glass, I'm not going to drink it. And uh, I've got this little tiny herb bottle thing, what I, I don't know, call it, spice, off the spice rack, off the wife's spice rack, I'd nick that. Um, basically because I can develop under safe light, which you can see up there, and show you guys it being developed as I go along. So uh, a little bit of fun. I'll show you the setup and what I'm going to be taking photographs of, and then we'll get right into it. So this is my setup over here in the corner of my dark room. You can see I've got a white wall, got black tape running down the side that's keeping that white stuff together. And I've got a couple of cameras and uh, another couple of bits of bobs here as well to take pictures of. Let's stick this bit of gaffer tape over here. I've just set my scene up and the scene comprises of whites, off-whites, you can see blacks, got silvers and also this buff uh, baseboard as well. So I've got lots of different tones going on within this image. Uh, this is the camera and tripod I'm going to be shooting, the uh, Olympus OM20. I've got a cable release as well and this is my light source, just a normal lamp. So none of this is going to change uh, throughout the various shots that I'm going to take and I'm going to take a few. Um, one by one, cut the film out of the camera and develop it individually. So although it's going to take me quite a while in here to, to do this and see the results, um, I'll compress it down for you guys for entertainment's sake. So I've turned all the lights off in the dark room, just doing a quick incident reading from the light meter. I'm not pointing it out towards the light at all. I'm pointing it towards the lens. And it's given me 5.6, just over 5, f5.6 at one second. So that's what I'm going to shoot at. So that's already punched in. Um, my, my exposure is going to be 5.6 at one second on every shot that I take. The light's not going to change intensity whatsoever. Um, so I could just continue. So this is what I'm going to be trying. The massive dev chart says with Rodnot 1 part to 25 uh, AT ISO, it's going to be six and a half minutes. That is what I normally do my development times for when I'm shooting Rodnoll uh, with the ortho film. And then I'm going to try it at one part to 50, which suggests 15 minutes on here. And then I'm going to do one part to 25 for two minutes, but I'm going to invert continuously. And then I'm going to try another one at one part 25 continuous inversions for three minutes. And you'll see this developing as I go along under the safe light. You'll see it uh, through the spice bottle, the negative coming through. And then after that, I'm going to do a stand development, which is going to be really boring because I'll have to sit in here for, for an hour uh, while, the <laughs> while the film stands. And uh, I'll speed that up for you at the end so you can see uh, stand development uh, coming through under the red safe light. Not sure how it's going to come out, but, um, you know, it's, uh, it's all good fun. So I've got to take one, two, three, four pictures first. So I'm going to do these all individually. And uh, like I said, I'll speed it up for you guys, um, you know, for entertainment's sake. Otherwise, you'll be sitting here for three or four hours like I am. So I'm ready to go. 5.6 on the camera. One second. Just put my cable release in. And when I put the film inside the camera, I advanced it first straight away so that I didn't have to do that afterwards. So uh, let's go. This is the first shot. No lights are on. No, that's it. Good. Ready to go. One second. First shot done. So I've taken my shot. First thing I need to do is just quickly mix up my Rodnall. I'm putting 50 millilitres in here in this manky old measuring jug. It still works. Got the things on the side of it. So in there, I'll just need two millilitres of Rodnell. One. That's two millilitres of Rodnell in there. 
Although this doesn't say Rodno on the packet, it's the same sort of formula. It's a R09 one shot developer, and I get this from First Call Photographic um, in, in the UK. Um, and it's about, I don't know, £10 for a 500ml pouch. And it lasts me ages. I can play around as much as I like with this stuff, and uh, it's good fun. So I take the film out of the camera, just to turn all the lights off. So this is ortho film. Don't do this with panchromatic film like your FP4s, your HP5s, your Kodaks. Um, etc. This is Ilford's Ortho 80 film and it's not sensitive to red but you do have to test it in your darkroom or wherever you are with your red lights make sure it works under your safe lights otherwise you'll fog your film. I've already tested mine so I'm good to go. So there's the picture I've just taken just going to cut the end off there and that bit there and I'm going to put the film back inside the container so that has not been exposed to any white light as such, only the red. So that's good to go for the next shot. Okay, so hopefully you guys can see this and the gloss part of the film is gonna be on the outside and the emulsion is gonna be on the inside and it goes. Put the lid on. Invert normally, one, two, three, four, five, and you should start seeing that coming through. So I'm going to do this for six and a half minutes. So this is normal development for this film and the dilutions that I'm using. So you can see the unexposed part of the film there and the exposed part, which is the darker area. It's as bright as I can get it in here, guys, for you. So it's hard to see, I apologize. So look on the opposite side. That's the opposite side. So I've got the fixer in there now. I'm just going to fix like I normally would in the tank. You can see the image there. And that's the part that's uh, fogged at the moment. That needs to clear. That will go clear once the fixer's uh, washed all those unexposed halides away. And all the ones that are remaining are the exposed silver halides that have turned to metallic silver. You can see that there. But it's still quite foggy because the fix hasn't done its job yet. It needs a bit more time. Get it? Time. And it's starting to clear. Can you see the, what the fix is doing there? That milky look is starting to go away. And we'll end up with a clear base film once the fix is process is finished. Now I can see straight away the fixing is pretty much done but I can see that the base of the film is slightly fogged because I'm quite close to that red light for this video demonstration. I usually set myself when I do this about two meters away from the light um, when I'm playing around but if I did that you wouldn't be able to see anything on the camera. So you've got quite a heavy base but we've still got an image on there. And there's the film there, just giving it a, a brief wash. Like I say, this is only a, a little demonstration test, so I'm not going to go through the realms of worrying about this negative for uh, conversation converse, conservation reasons. They're <laughs> going to be thrown away after this. So that's uh, got all the fixer off, or hopefully it has. And there it is, yeah, the base of the film is a little tiny bit looks um it's not as clear as i would get it if i was maybe a couple of meters away from that red light i am next to it so you guys can see what i'm doing on the video camera but uh, so i'll keep that process for the next ones as well so the base of the film should be the same before i carry on check out the new s flab beginner's guide to film photography and darkroom printing it's a complete beginner's guide from buying your first camera and developing film at home all the way to making your first darkroom print Packed with lots of information, illustrations and exclusive unseen step-by-step -step videos all in a simple and easy way to understand with personal email support from me along the way. Hit the link in this video's description or visit the SFLAB website for more details. On with the second one, this one I'm going to go straight to the two minute uh, development which is continuous inversion. So second shot, done, and goes the film again. And this is going to be continuous inversions for two minutes. One. 
I'll just stop halfway through so you guys can see the image quickly though, if I can. It's probably going to be a clearer base I reckon because it's not going to be sitting underneath that red light for six minutes. It'll still be interesting to see. I'll just stop for a sec. You can see the image coming through straight away. I'm going to continue. That black stripe you saw was the black, or that white stripe I should say, is the black tape on the background. I'll show you that again. That white stripe there, that's the black tape in the background. You can see the cameras there coming through. So I've got another minute left. And again, that's all the unexposed silver on the film, which is just going to disappear, which leaves us with the exposed areas of the film, as you can see in the middle, which forms our image. Let's give it some more inversions. That's pretty much fixed. So I've got my first three negs. That was the uh, six and a half minutes one. That was two minutes. And this one here was three minutes. And the um, the fog and base of the film of these two are pretty much they're not identical. I can't see no difference without densometer. But I don't think I gave the first one a fair budge. That was sitting underneath that red light for six and a half minutes. And I think it just got to it a little bit, you know. Um, so I'm going to do the six and a half minute one again without the red light on, just so I can give it a fair, fairer chance against these other two. So I've already scanned these, and like I've said before, my channel, I'm not really used to scanning. I, I use my DSLR to, to scan these negs, but I'm going to make a contact sheet of these under the enlarger with some paper in the darkroom and see how they come out side by side. So I'm just going to quickly do a contact sheet. Before I do that, I must test the film's fog and base and just make sure that I'm reaching the right blacks before I make my contact sheet, and I'll show you that in a second. I'll just show you this guys, for those that are learning in film photography, I've got a video on how to make a contact sheet. Um, so my larger set high up, I think the aperture's on F11. So I'm literally just gonna do a normal test uh, for uh, one second increments. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one more, eight. So there's eight seconds on there, and then when I develop this, I'll be looking at my test strip uh, to see where I can just barely see the sprocket holes, and then I'll know I'll get the right time to do my test strip uh, with this particular film. Now, these um, bases are probably gonna be slightly different, I don't know, but I'm doing this test on the correct exposure and the correct development uh, choice that I did earlier on, six and a half minutes, one part to 25 how the other negatives with the other development times fall into place. So these are my test strip. These are all increments of one seconds. There's one there, two, 
three, four, and I'm looking for when the sprocket holes are barely visible. And then that means then my, my paper's at the right blackness for me to make my contact sheet. So I've got one second, two, three, four. I can't see any change between five onwards. So I'm gonna go for five seconds. One, two, three, four, five. Obviously, if I just winged it and went for one or two, I'm not gonna see the true value of my legs. So uh, I need to do this test before I do contact sheet. It's a good practice to get into as well. Shows um, all your negatives, which ones are underexposed, which ones are overexposed um, at the correct values, you know? One, two, three, four, five. Can't see no change. I'm gonna go five seconds. So this is my contact sheet I've just made. You see this one was the first one that I did, which was six and a half minutes, uh, one part to 25. That's my normal development. And then this one looks very similar. Obviously they're only small little tiny prints, uh, but this one was one part to 50 for 15 minutes. And this one was the two minute continuous inversions, one part to 25. Same again, but three minute conversions. This one you can see is um, underdeveloped, just hasn't been able to give it as much punch as it needed. This one was getting there though, but still, mm, it's not, not too bad actually. Uh, and this was the stand development. You can see very low contrast. In fact, uh, the film base seems to be different to the others. But, um, you know, maybe, I don't know, that was one hour stand development. So, um, but very low contrast, easy to work with on an enlarger. Quite like that one actually. And the chances are, if I go out and shoot something on ortho film and develop in rod null, I'm not going to um, take chances and do these two minute or three minute or even four minute continuous inversions. What's the point? I may as well continue with my normal development. But I'd be interested to see uh, the difference between uh, one part to 25 and one part to 50. So, uh, and also the stand. So I'm just going to enlarge these and see what we can get in the grain values. So I'm just going to enlarge these and see the difference between uh, these three, one, two, and the stand uh, with the grain and the contrast. So obviously I'm not going to waste paper and print these all out. So just enlarging this, you can see this is quite large. This is uh, what, 10 by eight, and I'm only concentrating on this area. So everything's come out nice and big. And I'm going to put one strip down here um, on one negative and repeat that over the next three negatives. Uh, so this is the area. I'm just going to go across here to see what sort of grain we get, and what sort of contrast we're getting um, between these areas here. So these are the results here in a nutshell. Uh, this is the first one I did at uh, six and a half minutes, one part to 25. Uh, the other one at one part to 50 for 15 minutes and the stand development as well. Between these two, I can hardly see any difference in contrast at all. Um, these were both seven minutes. I tested against the white of the um, uh, focus finder. Um, and I can't hardly see any difference. The only thing I can see is this area here has got a lot more, it's more grainy than one part to 25. Um, maybe slightly less con, I can't, do you know what? I'm not even gonna talk about contrast because I can't see any difference. And we come down here, this was the one hour stand development and you know, it's got lacking contrast compared to the other two. And this was at five minutes. Again, I did a test on the white part of the um, focus finder to get my times. So that's another Wednesday wonder. That was uh, playing around with ortho film and rod null and seeing what different developing and dilutions and inversions do. I like it at one part to 25, that works for me. I'm gonna stick with it, but it's interesting to find these little things out when you play around in your own dark room or, or your kitchen or your bathroom wherever you are, uh, playing around with film and developers and uh, different times and inversions, etc. You get different results and you soon learn to understand what it's doing for your photography. And in this case, I'm going to stick with my one part to 25. It looks like it's less grain and uh, it works for me. Six and a half minutes. I was trying to play around with <laughs> trying to do it um, continuous inversions for three minutes, or maybe four. I could have gone for four. It might have looked all right. But to me, you know, just a couple of minutes uh, developing is no hardship. And uh, like I said, it works for me. So, and another thing, any of these Wednesday wonders, I'm gonna start putting in some little tips for your film photography or darkroom. And the first one is, at the end of my darkroom session, I always put a dust cover over me in large. You don't often see that on the channel, but when I've left the darkroom, I generally put this cover over. And this is just a sheet that I've got uh, for a pound. It's a, it's a cycle sheet that I got for one pound in the pound shop, funny enough. And uh, it does me proud, covers me in larger, keeps the dust off it 
when I'm not using the darkroom. Uh, so there you go, a little top tip. Get yourself a cover for your, for your enlarger if you haven't already got one. If you can't find a suitable one, have a look for a cycle sheet or something similar, which is cheap enough just to keep the dust off when you're out of your darkroom. Uh, just before I go, I'll just mention some of the results that I got back from the YouTube community area on my channel, um, where I put a vote out, um, who's got darkroom set up at home, and I've got 627 votes back. And... Uh, 34% have said they've got a dark room, they use their bathroom and kitchen. 27% have said they've got a purpose-built room, shed or garage, such as I've got a shed. And 30% uh, said I'm not yet, but I plan to. And 9% said they scan, they're not interested in, in dark room uh, printing. Quite interesting there, guys. Thanks a lot for um, putting your votes out and all the comments that I received on that as well. It was quite interesting to read. And hopefully others have found it interesting as well. And there's quite a few people on there that have said that they, at the moment they're only scanning their negatives because they haven't got a dark room set up. I'm sure in time you'll, you'll manage to get yourselves to set up in a dark room. It does take a while. It does take you know time to get all the equipment and all the gear. And also space as well. Some people haven't got the space for dark room. So I completely understand where you're coming from when you're scanning. Uh, you're not interested in dark room work. Or if you're scanning and you're planning to get a dark room at some point in the future you know it is space and it is equipment at the same time so uh, it just takes time to build up but i hope you guys if you're planning on getting a dark room can get set up soon it is great fun as you see me all the time mucking about in here anyway guys as always thanks for watching and special thanks to the guys that support me on patreon and also the youtube members area and everyone else that uh, takes interest in what i'm doing on the channel all you subscribers and uh, people that comment i really appreciate it and don't forget at 7 p.m on saturday i'm going live um, for the YouTube members area and also Patreons. So if you're a Patreon or YouTube member of Shoot Film Like a Boss, jump on there. I'll see you on Saturday live. We'll have a little chit chat about film. I'll catch you next time. Yeah.